one. Good morning. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami, Florida. It's the morning here, and we have a global cast here on the on the Hangout, uh, and it's a real pleasure to be doing this. Uh, we, today we have a talk for, from uh, Evangelo Pappas, a physicist from Athens, Greece. He's going to be talking about the technology of RT-SAFE, uh, an innovative product which combines radiation uh, therapy safety with 3D printing. And we're joined by a couple of distinguished panelists, and I'll let them introduce them before we turn it over to Evangelos. Welcome, Bobby. Hi, guys. My name is Bobby Lynn, and I'm the founder of My Local 3D Printing. Uh, you see, it's a bit dark over here because uh, it's midnight over here in Australia. Uh, so it's good to see that you guys are giving some sunshine. So um, yeah, I'll look forward to that in a, in a few hours. Very good. Welcome, Bobby. And it is, it's midnight in Australia. And welcome, George. Good afternoon, everybody from Sunshine State, Florida. This is George Lagis, some of the global business development specializing in telehealth internationally. Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, maybe. Okay, welcome, and I'm John Bennett from Miami, and uh, I love doing these hangouts because I get to meet great people like Evangelos. Welcome, Evangelos. Welcome, guys. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction. I'm really honored to be to be in this panel. Uh, and I would love to share with you uh, our vision and our new technology that hopefully uh, will help a lot of uh, cancer patients undergoing radiation therapy for their brain tumors. So I'm ready to share with you uh, the basic um, essence of our new uh, technology. And I will try to, to share my screen with you and uh, explain in a simple manner, if possible, what exactly we are doing. Okay, that's, that's the wrong. Okay, there you go. There you go. You got it. Well, so uh, RTSAFE is a medical technology company that is alive for the last 12 months. Uh, and our aim is to ensure cancer patient safety in radiation oncology. So there's almost 1 million of new brain cancer patients annually that are treated with radiation therapy which is, however, an extremely complex process. And sometimes, not very often, but sometimes this high complexity raises issues regarding patient safety. And uh, this is why there is a need for each and every separate treatment of the patient to be first tested to a certain instrument that can measure radiation. However, the instruments that are used nowadays have the shape of a cube or a cylinder, and they do not look at all like the real patient. And because each one of us has individualities, these individualities need to be taken into account when we are testing a radiotherapy treatment plan. So this is where RTSAFE comes. We are using the CD scans of the individual patient that is about to undergo radiation therapy. And by using 3D printing technology, we are 3D printing this specific patient bone structures and external surface. The material that we are using mimics the bone in terms of interaction with radiation. So during the, the printing process, each and every teeny bone structure with 7 millimeter accuracy is 3D printed. And this material, actually, as I told earlier, mimics the bone in terms of interaction with radiation. So each and every separate patient, this is a patient from Switzerland, can have a 3D replica of the patient's head. As a second step, the most interesting one is that after 16 years of extensive research, we came out with a unique gel that mimics brain tissue in terms of interaction with radiation. And this material is liquid when hot. Therefore, it can fill a container of any shape. Therefore, for each and every separate patient, we are 3D printing the bone structures, the external skin surface, and then we fill this phantom with a soft tissue, which is this uh, special polymer gel. This polymer gel, at room temperature, becomes a solid gel. It's not a liquid. And the end product is the head of the patient. And uh, the doctor has the, the possibility to treat this patient replica, this 3D avatar, 
as if it was the real, the living patient. So all the treatment process uh, is actually simulated and uh, the setup, the image guidance, the irradiation uh, is used as if it is the real patient. You can see here on one side is the living patient with the thermoplastic mask, on the other side is his avatar, but uh, is being treated exactly in the same manner as the living patient. So in few words, we are actually uh, testing for the first time, I mean, each and every separate patient has the possibility nowadays to check his or her treatment to uh, its individual avatar. It's an individualized quality assurance process. So the setup, the irradiation, using any kind of, radio, of radiation therapy modalities, the image guidance can be implemented exactly as the living person. As the next step, the irradiated head phantom is MRI scanned to the MRI scanner of the radiotherapy department. And these MRI scans of the irradiated phantom include inside the information of where the radiation dose was exactly delivered. And this is the interesting part. At the, second, at, at the last step, we are doing a co-registration of the MRI scans of the irradiated phantom and the dark areas are the high dose areas. And we are doing a co-registration with the CT scans of the living patient. And by playing with the transparency, as I will show you later, we can see in practice where the dose is actually delivered. And then we can move forward with an analysis, do a comparison of the treatment plan, which is the virtual board, the theoretical board, the calculations, with the measurements using our method, which is the actual delivered dose. And I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, the doctors and medical physicists in the department can have a full qualitative and quantitative evaluation of what's going on, of what was the plan for the treatment and what has been actually delivered. In case that there, there uh, would be a mistake, uh, uh, this mistake, this side of the effect will be applied to the 3D avatar and not to the living patient. Of course, we always would like to see that what we plan to deliver will be actually delivered correctly. Then approve the treatment and move forward to the treatment of the living person. This is an example of a, of a patient at the Gamma Knife. In Gamma Knife, uh, uh, we are using special head frames that are fixed on the patient's skull. Therefore, in this case, we can see a patient, the third avatar of a select patient, uh, that was treated with gamma knife. And we can have information, the dark areas here are the high dose areas. We can see where the dose was exactly delivered. The, uh, the delineation around these areas are the tumor areas, are the areas where the doctor wants the high radiation to be delivered. And this area here depicts the stem uh, and also the chiasm and the optical nerves, where we do not want the dose to go. So we are happy in this case that we don't see dark areas in the optic nerves, in the optic chiasm, and we can be sure that the treatment is delivered as it was planned to be delivered. So this is theory and this is real life. This is the data from the treatment plan, from the computer and the software that calculates those, and this is what has been actually delivered. So, in few words, each and every department in the world can upload the CT scans of the patient to our uh, server, and we are creating a patient-specific function delivered to the department in order to apply the pre-treatment plan ver verification. What is also very important is that using these head phantoms, a department can do a benchmarking, a calibration of the ra uh, radiotherapy machines that deliver radiation. And also these phantoms can be used as educational tools. Imagine a department that uh, put, put cases a new radiation therapy machine. It can easily use five or ten head phantoms and check, uh, you know, in a safe environment the new treatments, build confidence, and then move forward to living patients. We are really happy to be the winners 
of this year MIT Enterprise Forum competition. And uh, this work is a result of 16 years of uh, scientific research. And we are having our team more than 35 scientific publications uh, as a scientific evidence. We also have a PCT International Patent uh, for this uh, methodology. And we are, we are really uh, you know, honored to be supported by Libra Group. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important group that supports us financially and by mentoring. Right now we are having uh, offices and labs in Athens, Greece and in Lausanne, Switzerland. And very soon we are going to have labs in, uh, in San Antonio, Texas. The holding company uh, is soon uh, will, will be in UK. And the rest of the world we are planning to have licensing agreements with other companies in order to produce uh, our uh, products in, uh, in local markets. However, if uh, I would also love to, to, to show you a video explaining more or less the whole process. Are you okay with that? Okay. Oh, you okay. all done with the presentation, uh, uh, Evangelos? Okay. Okay, you so want to continue, right? Uh, are, oh. you, are you uh, seeing my, my screen? Yeah, yeah, you, 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 we see your screen. We see the the uh, 3D printed head. So, can I move forward? Yes, please. You want the slide of the head on, right? Correct. Oh, there you go. You move forward. Okay. So, can we hear the voice from the video? Yes, we can see it. No, we, we can't hear hear any sound though. And okay. it's, I think that it's, we see it as slides rather than a video. Oh, okay. You want me to do the, uh, the talking? You want to show the video, uh, Evangelos? Yeah, actually, these are, these are slides. Yeah, okay. We're seeing the, uh, the I guess, the CT scans. Okay, so uh, these are the, the CT scans and uh, a patient with, with a, a large number of small metastases. Uh, the process is to use the computer and uh, a software in order to plan the whole treatment. The, uh, meaning that uh, these are the process of what the doctor and the physicist aim to deliver. The red hot spots are the high dose area areas. And this is what the uh, treatment team wants to deliver to the patient. So this is theory. This is not real life. This is the treatment plan made in a computer using calculations. We have made a phantom of this uh, person. We radiated it and made the MRI scans. These are the MRI scans of our phantom. This one, uh, these scans are fused, are co-registered with the CT scans, and the dark areas are the high-dose regions that were actually delivered. And we are happy to see that, uh, that wherever there are the targets, the metastases, we are seeing dark areas. Dark areas are the high dose areas detected by our phantom. Therefore, we can do a comparison between theory, okay, and real life. And we're happy in this case to see that what we um, intended to deliver to this patient was actually delivered to the targets and not uh, uh, to other uh, healthy, healthy tissues. So it is the first time that we can uh, uh, implement an individual patient-specific quality assurance for the treatment of brain tumors. So this is, uh, in few words, the essence of what we are, we are doing. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm available for questions or if you want to uh, say more inf information about it. But this is more or less the whole process of this unique service that RTSF is offering globally.
That, that's amazing, okay. uh, Evangelos. Very, very good, Evangelos. I, I really appreciate the clear uh, presentation. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 get Bobby's uh, intake on the 3D printing aspect of it, which I, I don't understand, but maybe we, he can help us uh, understand it. Go ahead, Bobby. Well, um, you know, th this is uh, I, I haven't seen 3D printing used uh, in this scenario. The the closest thing I've seen would be uh, where surgeons would get uh, a 3D printed model of, let's say for example, if uh, he was working on, say, a knee joint replacement for osteoarthritis. So during uh, the pre-surgical planning, maybe he works with a clinical en engineer uh, to work on uh, where the implant should go, to work on surgical guides, so before the surgery, what he would get is a printed model of the knee with surgical guides on it so he could see, he and his team can see exactly how to perform the surgery before it happens. So that, that's the closest thing I've seen. But it just looks like Evangelos is using um, the 3D model not just for modeling purposes, but it seems like it's practical because he can collect... Uh, uh, he can collect um, radiation data with that model and identify exactly, you know, where radiation, where the dose is hitting. Um, I do, I do have a few questions for you, Evangelos. Yes, yes. So I, I wrote them down. Stop, you want me to stop the uh, uh, the share screening? I'm yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, well, no, you, you know, I, I think you can leave the share screening there because no. it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, so I, I'd like to ask you, uh, you, you, you know, obviously uh, you created this because it seems like there are a lot of variables um, to, like you mentioned that everyone's different. Right, um, it's not like there's one head, like one symmetry for everyone. So, when it comes to everyone's differences, what are the biggest variables that you, you know, that you have to take into consideration? You know, uh, the innovation is in this idea is really simple. And what is that? Imagine that the skull of each and every patient is a geometrical frame of reference. What is very important in the radiation therapy is to, irradiate it, is to irradiate only the cancer cells and to avoid the uh, healthy tissues that are very important, like optical chiasm, optical nerves, brainstem, or other very important centers. However, these healthy tissues are in a certain place in space relative to the skull. Okay? So, the simple idea is that we are uh, 3D printing the skull of the living patient and within this phantom we can know where the dose exactly is delivered relative to the geometric reference of the skull. And at the next level, by doing this co-registration of the living patient's CT scans, and his or her own phantom MRI scans, it is feasible for that to be done because the bone structures in the phantom are exactly the same as the living patient bone structures. So geometrically, this is effective. And since this is effective, we can see where the high dose area, the dark area, uh, is going to go. Therefore, at what exact tissues of the living patient uh, what exact tissues are going to be radiated. Mm -hmm. So it is a simple idea that, that, that came reality. Our uh, extensive know-how is on the material that fills the 3D printed phantom. It's a polymer gel dosimeter. And, uh, I worked with this kind of material since my PhD back in 1999. So we are having 16 years of experience in these materials. Uh, these are the essence. And, and that's what collects the, uh, the data for you, the radiation data? Yes, exactly. This material, when it is irradiated, there is an extensive polymerization that takes place. 
and the MRI scanner can detect this polymerization. So the higher the dose, the higher this material is polymerized in its elementary voxel, and this way the more dark becomes in the MRI scanner. Now, um, I, I'd like to ask one more question. I, I know that George uh, and John, they've probably got many questions as well, but I'd like to... Go ahead. Go ahead. Just... I really don't know <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> okay. Um, Evangelos, you said that uh, you 3D printed a skull, but even though uh, what you 3D printed is a replica of someone's head, uh, you know, there, there's... Uh, little little variables to take in, into consideration that you know um, that might you know be a percentage of error. Um, let's say, for example, the skin is soft, and you know the hair is soft, but it seems like what you 3D printed there is hard. And then you know it seems like it's all one material. You've got the skull inside, and also the contours of the of the head outside, which is also hard. But then when you strap in the head of the patient compared to you strap in the head of the model, is there, you know, what percentage of, of error is there? Uh, there must be some sort of, you know, it's slightly, it's not yeah. exactly an exact match. How, how do you measure that? Correct. So, uh, first of all, as you, as you correctly said, uh, you can see here, these two millimeters of skin around here, are really made of bone structure. This is correct and this is an issue. However, this issue has been quantified in terms that the error that introduces these two millimeters of skin instead of soft tissue is less than 0.5% for all kinds of brain tumor stereotactical and surgery applications. And this has been tested and published using Monte Carlo car calculations, etc. Have in mind that there is always there are some treatment planning systems that do not take into account at all nowadays in living patients that the skull is made out of skull. So I, I, I mean that there are some treatment planning systems that do not take into account the skull in the living patients. They are considering that the skull is of tissue. So there is, mm -hmm. there is this... Uh, this small uncertainty nowadays, and we have introduced, in our case, this uncertainty with uh, uh, two millimeters of skin surface around. However, at this point, we have also uh, tried to improve even this, uh, th this thing just for marketing issues. It's not at all crucial for the dosimetry issues, but we are trying to use uh, latex material just for marketing issues, and our next models are going to, to, to be like that. Moreover, we have moved forward to create uh, pelvic phantoms. We have made our new products for pelvic phantoms because the companies need to have pelvic phantoms and uh, sell them to their clients, explaining to them how well they are treating pelvic tumors, like prostate, etc. Evangelist. What's correct and right? Yeah, um, I've got um, one more question. I think uh, this is, you know, um, I guess the reasons, the reason, the main reason why you do this. Uh, you know, this obviously doing it this way, you're able to see what errors were, um, you know, what errors would happen if you didn't have this material. So I guess um, my question is, what's your success rate been? And I'm guessing your success rate would be equivalent to the errors that you catch when you test it out with with a model head. You know, you can compare the data where it's meant where the dose is meant to go and exactly. where you actually collected it. So so what's your success rate? What's the error rate that you caught? We are having a very small pool with uh, less than uh, 50 cases so far. What, what I can tell you is really strange. First of all, we cannot advertise our success. We cannot say that, oh, in this hospital, in that country, we found out this error. Okay? You can understand why. What, okay. what I can tell you is that two people out of these 50 so far uh, spared uh, one of them, 
one optical nerve and one of them another critical structure uh, because these departments realized uh, that uh, there, there was an error in the whole chain of treatment and realized this error using our, our products. So they stopped their treatment, uh, they did the quality assurance in each and every step of the treatment chain, realized the error, fixed it, and then moved forward to the treatment. Uh, but of course, our aim uh, is to, I mean, we really want for each and every end user of our products to say, great, approved. What we want it to deliver, it will be actually delivered. Because you see, there is this law, there is this, uh, this need for each and every treatment to be first tested. There's always a need to test the treatment of each and every separate patient to a, to a dosimeter and say, great, approved. Or, or, or to say, no, it is not approved. What we are introducing is a patient-specific quality assurance process that is not here to cancel out the, cancel, uh, the current status. The current status must be in place. But for some very uh, demanding cases, uh, it's my opinion that there is a need to test the treatment in a patient-specific 3D avatar. I just have a question. Uh, it's kind of a general question, uh, Evangelos. What, what is the state of the art today for someone with a, a brain tumor that's going to be radiated? What's normally done today? You know, uh, what I can tell you briefly is that uh, when, you, when you irradiate a person, there is uh, a 3D distribution of those. Okay? Okay. What, what is usually done today for stereotactic radiosurgery cases is that we are checking the dose at a single point in space or, in the best case, in a 2D plane. Okay. So, right now, there is no way to perform experimentally a 3D verification of the delivered dose. So, in the majority of the, of the departments, the medical physicists implement the plan of Mr. John Smith to a special dosimeter that measures the dose at a single point or measures the dose in a, in a single plane. This is uh, what is usually done for stereotactic radiosurgery cases where the radiation beams are extremely small, like let's say one centimeter diameter beams, etc. So it, it's extremely difficult to measure in 3D the dose. So, with this, uh, with this innovation of ours, uh, we are measuring in 3D the dose within the selected patient's uh, head. Okay, so you feel this, this more effectively localizes and treats the tumor, correct? Yes, I mean, we, we can be sure that what we plan to deliver to Mr. John Smith will be actually delivered to himself. To 9 a.m. Monday morning patient, 10 a.m. Monday morning patient, etc. Right now, for all the patients, each and every separate treatment plan is always tested in a, in a single instrument. And uh, for example, these instruments are extremely well and nice working instruments, but are very, very useful for larger fields, for treatments that called volumetric arc uh, uh, therapy treatments. But for stereotactic radiosurgery treatments that are dealing with very, very small volume targets, these instruments uh, are not adequate because uh, the spatial resolution of the dosimeters that are embedded within them is not uh, adequate. I, I don't want to go into detail, but I want to say with, with a few words that these instruments are necessary, but for very demanding cases, we truly believe that uh, the solution is our methodology for an individualized, patient-specific quality assurance process. Okay. George, George, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, I do. Uh, Evangeli, are there any plans to um, uh, really in-service the imaging companies like Philips, Siemens, G, all these companies that they do manufacture equipment? On radiation, uh, have you uh, done any pitch to them to see if that can become a uh, norm for uh, in the future? Of course, depending cost, 
what 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 I uh, what I, I can tell you right now is that um, Siemens and General Electric are not producing actually um, products for radiation oncology. Philips is only producing uh, a treatment planning software, and we are, we are re really proud to have our first uh, collaboration with Philips. And next month, we are about to have our first common uh, collaboration for bench benchmarking uh, a new product of Philips, a new software. However, the most important companies are the ones that are producing the machines that deliver radiation. These companies are Varian, Electa, Acuri, Brain Lab, very, very important companies. And we are uh, signed NDAs with some of these. This is what, what I can tell you so far. So, if you watch, we have started supporting these companies in terms that we are offering to them an excellent sales tool, educational tool for their clients, and commissioning and benchmarking tool. Okay. What, what's the cost? What is the, the additional cost, uh, Vagelis, on, uh, on uh, companies that will adopt this kind of technology? Uh, how much can you say that it's the additional cost on the treatment if we go through the whole process of uh, 3D modeling and, uh, and testing it and uh, really providing the statistical information that will be satisfactory to the uh, delivery institution? Yeah, right now, at, at the current stage of our development, the cost for, for each factor is 2,500 euros. 35? So 2,500 euros. Uh, uh, this is the price that, that we are having. Hopefully, uh, when we are uh, going to, to scale up, we can have an uh, economy of scale, and uh, we can uh, uh, um, diminish this, uh, this, uh, this price. Because believe me, our vision is not only financial. We're having a, a social vision, and we truly would like and would love to see this service to be available for each and every uh, brain tumor patient that receives some days of therapy. We're also proud to say that in Greece, we are offering with no profit this service for uh, pediatric uh, brain tumor patients. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's also an, an ethical issue for our team. Uh, and right now we are, you know, uh, ready to, to scale up with our new lab that is, is about to be made in USA. Um, and we want to, ha to have this service available for as many as possible people, not only the people that can afford to pay 2500 to check their own or their loved one's treatment. Okay. Just, I'll just make a comment that this is another area where personalized medicine uh, is applicable because uh, uh, now in the age of digitalization uh, and, and genomics, uh, pe people's gene can be gene mapped to be see it's seen if they're affected by a medication, uh, and and medications actually are, are being personalized also. And I didn't realize it it can be personalized too as far as uh, radiation. And, and Bobby, before we close, do you have any comments and qu or questions? Uh, well, first of all, again, I you know I said this before, but uh, really well done, uh, Evangelos. Um, Thank you so amazing. much. Thank you so much. Um, you know, actually, no. Uh, it seems like all my all my answers were uh, all my questions were answered, and I just think uh, you've taken a technology. That, to be honest, you know, it's actually not that new. 3D printing is—it's been around since the 1980s. But uh, you found a, a very clever way to go about it, and it seems like it's something that can help a lot of people. Exactly. This is the aim. This is the aim. Well, you, well, you know, that brings up a question I have, uh, Vandal. Uh, how did you get involved? How did you get involved with 3D printing? You know, actually. Uh, as I told you earlier, I have great scientific experience with these materials, with, with polymer gels. When I realized, you know, from the websites, from the internet, what a 3D printer can do, you know, uh, a light opened in my mind, saying, whoa, this is a great solution.
to to uh, to, to have an individualized quality assurance process. And in the beginning, it was just an idea of making another scientific publication. But some very good friends of mine told me, okay, the papers in journals are good, but with this idea, some people could be helped, and we could build, you know, a small health business. So this is how all started one year ago. But at that time, we have the great pleasure and honor to to win the Hellenic and Reparation Award, a very important award supported by Libra Group, Libra.com. <clears throat> and this is how everything started, because Libra financed us, and most importantly, they, uh, they are uh, giving us uh, mentors, very important mentors, because in the beginning, we, we were just professors with no know-how of doing international business. And with their support, after one year, we have started uh, expanding. Uh, and of course, one month ago, we are really proud to be the winners of the MIT Enterprise Forum competition. So the MIT Technology Review has an article about us and a large number of business uh, websites. So uh, the world is starting to know slowly about us. Very good, Evangelos. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to give this presentation. And I hope to hear more of the progress of this uh, very innovative, interesting technology. And I'd like to thank the panelists for coming. Uh, and we'll end the taping and we'll chat after. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you so much. I'm honored for this invitation. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay.